Hey everybody, hello, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you're new to my channel, by chance, my name is Cheryl Horvath and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the United States, Woodenville, Washington, in fact. And today is August the 2nd, 2021. Um, it's kind of a big day because it's the eve of our launch for our new mini catalog, the just July through December 2021 catalog, um, often referred to as the holiday catalog because it's, you know, it's got lots of holiday stuff in it. But um, today I want, I can't show you um, the inside of the catalog just yet. It's literally hours away before I can do that. But um, today I wanted to um, share with you the stamp set called Nuts About Squirrels. And it is so cute. Okay, guys, I have to just tell you that I freaked out a little bit right there because uh, that truly was a bat flying through the window of my office, and I didn't realize it until after I was done in editing this video. So it totally freaked me out. Um, we ended up trapping the bat into our bedroom, and at the time, I still thought it was a bird. I just thought it was a little chickadee, and my husband said, no, that's a bat. And so we ended up getting it out and everybody's safe. Nobody was injured in the process, but holy crap, that totally freaked me out. And how did it get in my house anyway? That's what I want to know. So my husband's on it. We're trying to figure out where the leak was, but geez, it's not even Halloween yet. Oh my gosh. Crazy. Okay. So back to our originally scheduled video. I am such a fan of squirrels. I have, um... I have always loved squirrels. I collect little squirrel trinkets and uh, figurines and things like that. And I also have um, a buddy in my backyard who looks like this. I call him Stanley. Here he is in my front kitchen window. That's where I keep his food. And uh, he comes up every day just about and has a little bite to eat. But anyway, um, I adore squirrels. I just think they're so sweet. And so when this stamp set came out, Nuts About Squirrels, I had to have it. So it's a two-step stamp um, set. It does not have coordinating dies. And I think it retails for $17. Um, which is their pretty standard price. Yeah, $17, which is the pretty standard price for stamp sets that don't come with dies. And... Um, I wanted to show you some of the cards that I made using this set. Uh, I'll say that I started out first casing the um, the design from the catalog that the designers um, published, and I loved it. And I just kind of kept on going. But in the in the process, I was trying to figure out the right color combinations for stamping the squirrels. Did I want to stamp the squirrels? Did I want to color the squirrels? You know, it was. Um, it was, it, it took me some time to actually figure it out. So I mapped it all out and I hope that you will find it helpful that I kind of did some of the legwork for you because you'll be able to see where some of the colors just naturally go well together. And then I even went a little bit outside the box and showed you some non-traditional colors of squirrels and how you could stamp them and make a fun little card um, using non-traditional colors too. So uh, let me turn the camera around, we'll get started. And let's see here. This is the one I want. Okay, so this is the stamp set, Nuts About Squirrels. Uh, this is the mini catalog that this stamp set can be purchased in starting tomorrow, um, 5 a.m. Mountain Time is when the catalog launches officially to non-demonstrators. And so you can um, you can grab snatch this this stamp set up from that um, as soon as you want tomorrow. Blech. So the other thing I wanted to mention is the uh, paper I'm going to be using is from the celebration paper, and it is called Peaceful Prints. And so this is also some paper that. Um, can be earned through celebration rewards so it's really pretty it's it's a little bit holiday-ish um, and I wasn't intending this card to be holiday-ish so I hoped I 
did a good job at achieving that, but this is one side of it. And then here's the other side of it. So you've got great candy cane stripes, snowflakes, you've got um, peaceful deer. There's a punch that's gonna coordinate perfectly with this paper and punch this deer out. So I'm looking forward to getting that. You've got some very country um, cottage feel to this paper, which I love. It's totally all about me. So this is the paper we're gonna use in our card today. And again, it's called Peaceful Prints, and it's using Cherry Cobbler, Garden Green, Real Red, and Sahara Sand. So that's that. I went ahead and I chopped up a bunch in advance so that I had it handy in six by six squares. And I'll tell you guys, if you're like me, it's hard, to, if you fall in love with the paper, it's hard to cut it. And all I can say is just bite the bullet and do it because if you cut it, you will use it. And there's no sense in having paper sitting around gathering dust if you don't use it. So cut this paper up, get it into six by six squares, at least half of it. You can leave the 12 by 12s um, for a later time or for bigger projects if you come up with something. That's what I like to do. I don't cut the entire pack. I cut like half of it into the six by six and then it's usable for me and I don't have to really stop what I'm doing and make a bunch of cuts. So um, that being said, let me show you the cards that I made using this set. And the first one I made, I didn't, oh no, the first one I made, I cased. So this is the card that was cased from the catalog and I hand colored the squirrels. I think in the catalog they were stamped but I hand colored these guys. And then I used a different color combination. The, um, the set, oh, let's see what they cased in the catalog or what they did in the catalog was, oh, they used the paper that goes with the, what is it? the Bounty of the Earth paper. So in the catalog, they made their card using this paper and this print primarily with coordinating Cajun Cray's cardstock. So um, I didn't want to use that paper. I wanted to use one of the new papers just to show you. So I stepped outside the boundaries a little bit there in terms of casing it. But this uses um, another, it's not a celebration paper, but it actually is on sale and it's on sale for only a few more hours. So if you're watching this video in on August 2nd, you literally have hours left to grab this paper, which is on sale for $9.78 a pack. Um, it's gorgeous paper, and you can use this for fall, you could use these two for fall, this definitely for fall, and then possibly this one for fall too. And the rest of them are super... Um, fun holiday type prints. And these colors are Cherry Cobbler, Evening Evergreen, Misty Moonlight, Sahara Sand, Soft Succulent, and of course white. So uh, this is the um, color palette that I used for this card. So I used an Evening Evergreen base, and then I used the stripes here, and I used this one for the background, and then um, colored them, and then stamp this Cajun Craze, Bumblebee, and Soft Succulent, I believe, are the colors of those. And then I really didn't decorate the inside. So that's the first card. The second card I made was also cute. I, I stamped this border by hand, and super easy. This particular, um, what do you call that, acorn? Came from this set, which is called the Banner Year, also current in the new mini catalog. And it's this guy right here that I used. I had to have this set just because it's so vers versatile. It's got Happy Thanksgiving. It's got quite a few Halloween stuff. Uh, it's a two from, which is great for Christmas tags, Christmas wishes. I love this little um, spider web. These little images are great for decorating the front of your envelopes kind of thing. Um, so I used the acorn from this set. Had to have it called Banner Year. And I then I created, then I used the coordinating leaves and I just did random uh, stamping. I, I trimmed it out with a piece of Cajun Craze. This is crumb cake, which has been embossed with, I believe it's the bark um, embossing folder, which gives it just a nice texture. 
And then I colored this little guy with crumb cake. And I believe that is cinnamon cider for uh, the acorn. And then a little bit of flirty, not flirty, flirty flamingo, I, a little bit of dark petal pink for his cheeks, which I thought were cute. And then I just left the inside. I did put a, a border, a crumb cake border, but I left the inside blank. So here's card number two. Card number three showcases a non-traditional set of colors for a squirrel card, I thought. This is using the Sweet Symmetry paper and also on sale right now for the next few hours. And I think the sale ends at midnight tonight, so don't delay. This is 12 by 12 um, paper and on sale for $9.78. Again, so awesome deal. This is just a die cut circle. I stamped him in Bumblebee, just one step stamping. I didn't do anything special to him. I just inked Bumblebee up and stamped him out. And then these little guys, those square ones, where did I get those from? Hold on, I've got them right here. Here they are. This is the 2022 In Color Square Gems. And, um, stuck. These are new pockets that I got. I was listening to, I was about to promote this. It's stuck on this one little tab right here. Um, I was listening to the Paper Pixie, and this is how she organizes her. We're just going to fix this right now. I'm just trim it a little bit off right here. These are the Passport Pocket Protectors. Passport Pocket Protectors, yeah. And they come in a pack of 10, and then your stuff should just slide right in. Obviously, I trimmed a little bit off, but let me show you a few others that I... I just have one pocket per pack of jewels and then they just stay neatly in my drawer and I can flip through quickly the ones that I need and pull them out and put them back and that way they stay nice and tidy. So there's, I will link to those below in case you're interested in that. Um, so anyway, Bumblebee, these are the square gems that are also in the new annual catalog so you can get those right away. I didn't do anything to, this is a... Calypso Coral background and a Just Jade card base. And I didn't do anything to the Calypso Coral. In hindsight, I wished I would have like done um, maybe some tone-on-tone -tone stamping just to give it a little bit more interest. I didn't want to give too much texture because there's a lot of texture going on or prints going on here, but I just thought this was cute and an alternative design for a squirrel card. So there's that. Um, the next one also showcases some more paper that is on sale right now, and this is, um, I really liked how this card turned out. This is the In Good Taste paper that is a 24 pack of 12 by 12, and that is on sale, I think, for $17, and it's more because it's double the paper. So the other papers that are in the sale are only 12 sheets, this is 24 sheets. And so these are very this is a great masculine card i think um but the the prints in this particular paper pack can can be used do i have a i do have somewhere yes so here's my in good taste designer series paper um layout so you can see you've got all these wood grains you've got all these textiles and um brick patterns but wait, there's more. Look at here. You've got more textiles, textures, fabrics. This is just a really awesome all-purpose paper set to have that I really encourage you guys to take advantage of the sale. It'll be around. It's in the annual catalog, so it's not going away anytime soon. Basic Gray, Early Espresso, Gray Granite, Night and Navy, Petal Pink, Rococo Rose, which has been retired, Smoky Slate, Slate and Very Vanilla. So, great paper set that I used for this card here. And then on the inside, I embellished it with a little strip of early espresso. Hope you're feeling bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and I love that expression. So, 
cute birthday card, and then embellished with some gilded gold gems. Cute. Let's see. Was that it? Yeah, that was it. Four cards. Four cards. So the next thing I want to show you before we jump into making the card is my little template of cheat sheets of coloring, which I just stamped out a bunch of the squirrels on um, paper. This is the one that I use for my hand colored cheat sheet. You can see here that I use the ivory and the bronze for these two to color them. And I think the shading turned out really nice for that. And then on this one I used crumb cake, light and dark. So I wonder if many of you even know about the ivory and the bronze, because I didn't know about it right away either. They don't look like they would blend very well, but they actually do. They blend nicely, as you can see here. Um, you got to work it a little bit, but that's all right. Um, so ivory and bronze and uh, crumb cake, light and dark. So there's my colored versions. And I think this is ivory and bronze. Yeah, ivory and bronze for the acorns that he's holding. Now these are the ones that I stamped. And this is soft suede with a cinnamon cider acorn. Cinnamon cider squirrel with a soft suede acorn. You see I wanted to build a little bit of contrast. I didn't want it to be all the same shade. So I contrasted them a little bit that way. We've got just plain Sahara sand and then this is second generation early espresso. And I don't know about you but I have gray squirrels also in my yard and this actually is pretty close to the color that they are so I thought that was cute. Um, this one shows crumb cake Great granite. Uh, this is second generation cinnamon cider. And then this is full on Cajun craze. Cinnamon cider for the acorn, soft suede for the acorn on that one. Okay, now we get into the fun ones. I, just for kicks, I did some alternative colors of squirrels. The only one I really care for are these two. It would have to, I'd have to figure out what the design would be. It'd have to be really coordinating colors for me to, to go with that. But I love the bumblebee and the clips of coral works for me too. I didn't do a very good job stamping that. But you can see even if you're off stamping, it, it still looks cute. I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal to be off a little bit, off kilter. So there's those colors. And then the last two colors are flirty flamingo and then the Calypso Coral. Did I have the Calypso Coral? Oh yeah, I did. I stamped him twice. So this actually might be cute for a little girl birthday card or something. I don't know. But so there's my my thoughts on how to stamp those the little squirrel critter in this stamp set. Okay, we're going to get into making our card. And the color palette I chose is this. We're going to do the same card casing from the catalog. The catalog shows the three steps um, of cards. So you've got the beginner card, you've got the casual stamper, and then the avid. And this one is going after the avid. But it's nice that it gives you the three different examples of how you could use the stamp set. So, But I went for the avid. And um, again, I chose these colors from the... Darn it. What's the name of it? Painted Christmas, I think. Hold on. I'll get these pretty soon. Peaceful prints. Peaceful prints. So we are just going to go ahead. I wish I could show you the catalog and show you the samples that I'm going after for my design, but I can't eat just yet. So have to be patient for another how many how many hours till 5 a.m. tomorrow? Okay. All right. So let's get out our stuff. These are the, all the everything that we're going to use. Um, let's get our let's put these pieces down and then we'll do our stamping. So I'm just going to use my tumble model. You can use whatever adhesive you choose. Oops! And there's my doorbell. Okay, sorry about that. That was my uh, Costco delivery showing up. Uh, what would I do without delivery? Okay, so I just went ahead and finished gluing this piece down. Um, this is four inches by five and a quarter inches, so which is a pretty standard size for the card base. 
Then we're going to adhere, let me look at my sample again. So I did make a little modification because I wanted to showcase more of this paper. So I cut this down a little bit. So they made this a four by four inch square in the example in the catalog. And I cut it down to four by three. So I'm just going to glue that right down in the center. Just kind of eyeball it there. Get that down. Okay, so there's our base ready to go. This is what we're going to stamp on. So that's going to end up going right there. So we need to stamp a couple of squirrels and then we need to stamp the branch and the leaves onto this piece right here. So let's get some paper out and let's do some stamping with the squirrels. You guys, I have to tell you, I this Stampin' Pierce mat changed my stamping life. I tried for many months to use my own. Um, and I don't know why I was being so cheap, because honestly, I think these are $5. I gotta tell you, how much are these dumb things? They are so worth it. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Um, accessories. They are so worth it, and they help my stamping game so much when it comes to using the photopolymer. Darn it, so much for my tabs helping me find stuff. Oh, here we go. Stampin' Pierce Mat, $5. Guys, you have to get this. I'm telling you, it, it changes. It's game-changing. I made this one myself with two pieces of, of fun foam and a big cardboard. And it works okay, it, um, but I finally broke down and I just bought this, and you can see how much more thick this is than mine. And I'm telling you, it makes a difference. You need to get a Stampin' Pierce mat. Or make your own. You, instead, of, instead of using two sheets of foam, you could use four, but honestly, you're going to spend almost $5 in foam just to get this. So buy the mat. Trust me. All right, so we're gonna get out our, I think it's our D block. Yep. And I start with the two-step stamping on this particular guy. I start with the outline first. Sometimes I do it the other way around. Um, but this time I'm gonna do the outline. So we're gonna use this guy and this guy. So let's get another block out. I will also say that if you get to um, a point where you're making a very large order and you get your half, you reach the um, where you reach the point where you are eligible for one half price item, I strongly recommend getting the set of blocks, the full set of blocks, because in my mind you can never have enough blocks. But it just comes in handy. I wish I could show you. I've got a tray that's right in front of me. So it's right within reach. I've got everything. Maybe I'll take a picture of it at some point and show it to you. But they're just, they're handy. I have two, at least two blocks of every size. And I'm telling you, you think that's a lot, but if you're an avid stamper, it comes in handy. Okay, so we're gonna stamp one of these guys. And I'm using Tuxedo Black Memento Ink. Wipe him off, and I'm going to stamp another one of these guys. Good. Stamped nice and crisp. Let's see what else do I need to stamp. I need to stamp Nuts About You, so I might as well do that one while I'm out stamping. And I think I'm going to coordinate the color and use the... Garden green. I think it's garden green. Yeah, garden green. So let me grab my garden green. Put him away. Okay. 
note him up. I think I'm going to do him in a circle punch this time, so I'm leaving quite a bit of space in the perimeter. All right, and I will put those away after the video is done. So there's that. The other stamping we have to do is this little guy here. Um, but we're going to wait on that, and I'll tell you why when we get to that point. It just is about a, a, a positioning, so you want to make sure you have the branch in the right place on the card. And to do that, you'd need to have these cut out first. So, Okay, so now we're ready to color. And I'm going to do... Um, so with the Garden Green and the Sahara Sand, I think the best route, well, you could do Sahara Sand, and that would match perfectly. Can you guys see? <clears throat> the Soft Suede would also be a nice combination. So maybe... Um, Oh no, but I wanted to color because I wanted to show you how to color. So if I were stamping, I would do one and one. So I would do Sahara Sand and Soft Suede with this with this background card combo. Um, but because I'm going to color, I'm going to do the Ivory and Bronze and the Crumb Cake. Okay, so here we go. I wonder if I should zoom in a little bit while I'm coloring. Let's see if I can do this without messing you up. There. Okay. I'm going to start with the ivory and the bronze. These are, they come in a combo pack. They are also, I think, the same price as a regular combo pack. So, ivory and bronze, two markers, $9. Yeah. So they are the same price. So if you don't own that combo, I didn't own it right away because I, I, I missed it in the catalog somehow. I'm going to start with the fat tip of the ivory. And if you, I followed the coloring directions based on the sample in the catalog. So they left these sections just plain white. So there's no other shading on it. So that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start um, and I'm very loosely coloring I'm I'm being a little careful on the outside border but here on the inside I'm kind of flicking a little bit like so and then this is going to come, and I'm just going to draw a little line right on, right even with this eye, come down like that. And then everything else gets colored in except for this little white spot of his belly. So we're just going to leave a little white patch there. And I tend to um, avoid really scrubbing a lot of ink over the printed lines of the Memento Black, if you can, because it will bleed a little bit. Now, if you wanted to leave it just like that, you totally could. But I'm going to give it a little bit more dimension. So this is now the bronze pen, and I'm just going to come in loosely flick a little bit of contrasting color like so and then I'm just going to kind of give them a little bit of shading in the areas where I think it would be a little bit darker for me, this is just kind of a guessing game sometimes. I really just kind of follow my my gut in terms of where I think extra color should be deposited. So there's that. Now I'm just going to um, grab my ivory 
can kind of go over those and blend a little bit, just a little bit more. See how easy? And then you've got kind of a real furry looking squirrel. So for the, um, what did I want to do for the acorn? See how easy it is to have these, how handy it is to have these? I think I want to do the soft suede. Oh wait, there's no, oh yeah, there are pens for soft suede. What am I thinking? Okay, so soft suede, light and dark. So I'm going to go, which one's my dark? I'm going to go dark on the cap of the acorn. And because I haven't colored this before, I'm just going to do a little test and see. Yeah, that should be fine. Can even give it a little bit of a shade and highlight right there. Okay, that squirrel's done. Nope, not done. We've got to give him a little cheek. This is dark petal pink. All right, so ivory and bronze. Now we're going to do crumb cake, light and dark. And I'm going to start with the light, obviously, like I did before. And same method. So make sure you can see me. Just loosely coloring and flicking. Give them a real bushy, warm, furry tail. This guy we're going to color all the way in because I don't think you could see any of his white belly. So I'm just going to co color the whole guy in. Oh, except for his cheeks. I'm going to do the same thing. Just stay right close to his eye line. And again, if you wanted to be done just like that, you could be. I'm going to come back in with the second color and just give them a little. A little more. I'm going to go darker on his feet. I'm going to give him a little highlight, dark highlight on his there and around the side of his face. And on his hindquarters. Oh my gosh, that's cute. Uh, come back in with the light. Just blend that line a little bit more. Give him his cheek. Oh my gosh, so cute. That is it, guys. That's how fast it is to color these little dudes. Um, I might do a different video and give you some tips on how to the two, do the two-step stamping, but that uh, could make this video very long, so I'm going to hold off on that for now. We are going to fussy cut these. They look a little bit intimidating, but they're not bad. The reason I showed you the other card, which one was it? This one with the circle punch, because this you wouldn't have to fussy cut. So if you're interested, if you're not interested in fussy cutting at all, you could do this design and just stamp on him and punch him out with the circle. So there's a good option, non fussy cut option for you.
I am not the best fussy cutter in the world. Sometimes I have the patience for it, sometimes I don't. But because I am so in love with these little squirrels, I'm investing the time. Okay, I'm going to put this into high speed so that you don't have to sit here unbearably listen to me drone on about how much I love squirrels. So I will be back momentarily. Okay, I'm back. Here's my little guys all cut out. Aren't they cute? And now we are ready to stamp on this little panel. And this was cut to four by two and three quarters. And that, like I said, that's gonna go right there. And we're going to put a little branch for him to sit on. This guy's gonna be popped up kind of hovering down here. And then we're gonna have this little nuts about you, probably circle punched. But for now, the reason I didn't want to do the stamping of the tree branch before is I wanted to have the squirrels in place so that I knew exactly where I wanted the branch to go. So let's grab our little tree branch. I did do that branch in early espresso. And I'm just going to stick this right on my little G block. Grab my stamp and pierce mat. Put these guys back in place. So now I want the branch to kind of hang off, run off the edge right there. And then I want him to be sitting on it. So I want the branch to be right about there. So I'm going to move him out of the way. Grab my early espresso, and I'm just going to make a little tick mark where the top of the branch is. I could try to remember, eyeball it, but I don't trust myself. So now I'm just going to stamp this guy, angling it downward ever so slightly, like so. Oh, somebody turned the heat on. Goodness, I'm starting to sweat. Then we're going to take our little uh, leaf, guys. And there's a leaf vein for him also. So I'm going to use my tiny little blocks. See, I told you, you guys get you, a lot of blocks come out when you stamp. It just saves time having to clean and take off and whatever. Um... Oh, of course, the one time I need my hair tie, I don't have it on me. Whew. Uh, let's see. Colors for the leaves. So I'm going to use Bumblebee and Garden Green, which I had out already. Somewhere. Oh, here. And then I think I'm going to do uh, Cajun Craze. This is the three colors of leaves. So let's just make sure that's where I want him. Oh my gosh, so cute. Okay, to steal a line from Kelly Aitchison, what you guys drinking today? I started drinking this infused water that I make myself. I bought this really pretty pitcher that um, has a infused thing in there that you put a bunch of fruit and I have been sucking it down it makes me it makes it so much easier for me to drink water okay I'm gonna try not to get my head in the way here so I'm just inking this up full strength and I'm just trying to line up the bottom rounded part of the leaf with the branch and kind of Assume gravity's doing its work with pulling it down. Didn't get the cleanest stamp on that, but that's all right. So I'm going to do another one here in green. And then do one more in the bumblebee. So cute. Then I'm going to take the 
little um, veins for the leaf and what color do I want to put that in? What did I do on this one? Ah, getting my cards in my ink. So I used tone on tone. You could see it, couldn't really see it with the Cajun Grays, but you can see it here. So maybe what we'll do is let's just see how this looks. Doing tone on tone, full strength. So you can see it now, but when it dries, it might be really subtle, but that's all right. Oh, I was off a little bit. Let's do that again. There. And then the bumblebee. Oops. Cute. Okay. All right. We're ready to put these guys away. Anyway, so I was saying about the infused water, it is um, my, my most favorite one right now is watermelon, mint, and lime, if you can believe it. It kind of sounds like a weird combination, but I really like it. Really, really like it. Let's see how this is. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so cute. So I think we're going to pop this up even though we didn't before, didn't on the, on the sample. No, we just popped up the squirrels. So that's what we did. I'm kind of feeling like this is a little plain, but maybe we'll put some embellishments on it. I'm just thinking though, do I want to, no, I feel like I've put a little corner thing there. Let's just leave it. All right, so let's get our dimensionals out. And I I do a couple of things. I put a little dot of glue on his feet because I want those to be kind of secured down as if he's standing on the tree branch. And then I put three dimensionals, one on his tail, one close to his face and one close to the center. Take these guys off. We don't need that there right now. And we're just going to angle him down so that he's on the branch itself. Hold that glue down for his feet. And then the dimensionals. Did I get it? Oh, wow. Well. I ran that off on the dimensional here. So we're going to, like I said, it doesn't matter. We can put another one. Let's put another one in there. Sneak it in there. So I'm just grabbing a mini. And I'm going to sneak that right in there like that. You don't even have to pull off the backing. Just the fact that it's there and stuck to the paper is good enough. If you wanted to figure out how to get your tweezers in here and pull off the backing, you could. It's just not necessary. There, I got it. Okay. Okay. So there's that guy. And then this guy, let's put him back on the card, make sure we have everything the way we want it. I just feel like this needs a border. What do you guys think? I think I'm gonna cut a little tiny Sahara sand. Let's just double check our measurements here. So we have two and three quarters by four. And I want a piece of Sahara sand that's just a hair bigger. So I'm going to jump into my scrap bucket of Sahara sand. Let's see if I can find a piece that I don't have to waste too much of. That's not big enough. I must have done something in here. What do I have all these scraps for? Let's just use this one. Okay, 
So we said, sorry, I got to measure again because I've already forgotten. I think it was two and three quarters by four. And now I've lost my ruler. Two and three quarters by four. And I just really want to add an eighth of an inch. So we're going to go four and one eighth. by two and three quarters plus an eighth. So that is seven eighths. Yeah. Let's see if this fixes my issue that I'm having. And I think it's going to. Yeah, totally. Yay, I love it when a plan comes together. Improvise. Putting this aside because I don't want glue on that. Grab this just precautionary. This is my silicone sheet. Okay. Get that down with some glue. Wiggle it around in place. Make sure you've got equal borders on all four sides. Now, I like that so much better. It just didn't seem finished to me. And this is going to go down like so. Is that centered? Yes. And then we're going to put dimensionals on him. Let's stay kind of in the center so I don't do what I did with the first squirrel, which was get him off the page. Yeah. Okay, that's done. What did we do with our pre-stamped? There he is, nuts. So I had an idea to use a circle punch. And I know we've retired our circle punches, which makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. But I... This was an old, old, old punch that my uh, upline gave me when I first joined because I didn't have anything. And so I'm going to try this. This is a 1 and 3 eighths circle punch, which fits it perfectly. And then I thought I would do a little border. And we, let's try Sahara Sand. I might, do, I might switch it up to Garden Green. And this is the one and a half inch circle punch. So that gives it just a perfect little border. So we could do like that. And let me try the garden green. And I have hopefully just big enough of a scrap. Gotta be tight. Oh, it's let's see if I can fudge it. Oh, I think I like the green. Well, let's do the green. Okay. Take this. We are going to pop this up also. I 
I use a tweezers a lot, you guys. It just helps me keep my hands out of the way while I'm trying to figure out where something needs to be placed. And then when I'm happy with it, I can pop it down. And I'm happy with that. So there's that. And now, I need something up here. So we're going to go with... I found these genial gems in my stash. And... I thought the green would be cool. Oh, I wonder if we should put a bow in there too. This one has a bow. Let's let's grab that out also. So this is just all the linen thread that I have. I got it. I just keep putting it into. It's actually several different versions of our linen thread. I can tell the thickness is different, but whatever linen thread you have on hand would work. So I'm just going to tie. A double bow. So when I do that, I take two separate strands and cut them. Now tie. Can you guys hear that truck outside? I hope not. This linen thread is a little bit of, uh, more delicate, which is why I did the double bow. And I, you can see I cut way too much. I would measure better. Oh yeah. Now let's see, should I put it up there? No, I'm gonna put it right up there. For that, I'm gonna use a glue dot. And I'm going to roll it a little bit so that it doesn't stick out beyond where I want it to stick out on the back of the bow. Whoops, I'm off camera, sorry. Basically, I just folded it in half. And then pop that down right there. Spread these out a little bit. You can cut them at different lengths too if you want. Just gives it a little bit more fullness. And these, let's see here. See if I like this or not. I'm not pressing them down super hard. Actually, I do like that. Maybe. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I spent way too much time fussing over placement of dots. I want another one, even though I know there's a, there's a rule of three, but I felt like one needed to go right there. Okay. The inside of the card can be finished in any which way you'd like. I just put a piece of blank white in there to um, have it be ready to go when I'm ready to send. And then I can add... In fact, sometimes I won't even glue it down because I'm, cause sometimes I will want to stamp on it. So when I have the card in my stash, this will just be in here loose. And I can stamp Happy Birthday or I could stamp Happy Valentine's Day or, you know, whatever. And then glue it down when I'm ready. So, so there's my card. What do you guys think? I think he's super cute. In fact, I like this one better than this one. But this paper is adorable. You're going to want it for fall and for Christmas. And it is called, okay, third time's the charm here. It is called Peaceful Prince. I'll get it eventually. I'll get it. Peaceful Prince with Nuts About You and the Banner Year. Oh, no, I didn't use Banner Year on this one. I used Banner Year on the other one. So this is the Nuts About Squirrels. And it's... 
really fun to make. I hope you guys um, like it, and I hope I've inspired you if you already own this stamp set to um, pull it out and make some fun cards with it. Uh, all you, everything here is available in my online store, and I do sell everything that um, I use, with a, a few exceptions like this, obviously. Um, I can't sell, and the, and the circle punch is retired, but um, everything else is for sale. Glue dots, embellishments, cardstock, stamps. I would love to earn your business, and uh, I also would really appreciate it if you gave me a like and a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. It helps me to grow and, and broaden my reach to everybody that I'm trying to um, uh, inspire and stay crafty with. So that's it for me today. Thanks for hanging in with me. It was a long video, but it, hopefully worth it for you. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye.